to let's say you own a pencil factory, I'm a worker in that pencil factory. You can have all the machinery, all, you can buy all the raw materials you want, but without me and presumably many others like me to assemble the pencils, all you would have is a pile of wood, yellow paint, graphite, rubber, and aluminum. Okay. That would be worth it. So, and that is worth less than the pencil when you try and sell it. And yet all of that value added by labor, apart from the wages that you give me, which if we're being honest, there is a major power imbalance in our ability to negotiate that. Well, if, if, all you, if all that putting the pencil together requires is basic use of your prefrontal cortex, then yes, your labor is alienable at lower rates than if you are a doctor. That's not the fault of the person who owns the machinery. But if, all, but, if the, but if you didn't have workers like me and your pencil factory and you were just one man... But I do. So I have millions of people who are willing to do that voluntarily for me. If you're just one person trying to ass like assemble pencils, you're not going to get very far. You need workers. Capital needs labor infinitely more than labor needs capital. That's why you have worker cooperatives where the workers I are I fundamentally the ones disagree on the distinction between capital and labor. Capital is just a term for money. If you're talking about money, money does not grow from the ground. Money only has value because it was traded for labor at one point or the products of labor. So if I take my money and I buy machinery, I have invested my labor in doing that because I didn't get the money from nowhere. Even if I got it from my parents, my parents didn't get the money from nowhere. The people who built the machines required me to trade something of value to them in order for me to obtain the machines. The people who invented the machines required people to pay them in order to get the, the patent to that machine so they could build the machine. The, the, the problem that I'm seeing in, in what you're saying is you have still failed. If, if what you're talking about is a system of voluntarism, you still have not named any area in which we disagree, and yet you're telling me that you're a socialist and I'm a free marketer. So one of us has got this wildly wrong, and I'm pretty sure it's not me. <laughs> The differentiation I draw, and I'm not alone in this, I'm not one person trying to redefine anything, the differentiation I and many others like me draw between socialism and capitalism is that under capitalism, when you as the owner of the factory, you give me a wage. The wage could be seven twenty-five. it could be $15, it could be whatever an hour, right? right? But you, you give me a wage, all, all the additional profit above the, uh, made from selling the pencils or whatever good you produce above what is reinvested into the company ultimately goes to you or the investors, the, uh, it, those who own shares in the means of production. Right. Under socialism, those people are the workers. And the example I give, again, is cooperative enterprise. No, those are the people who are investing the risk. So if they carry the risk, then they get the benefit. The owner of the factory carries the risk, therefore he gets the benefit. The workers in the company you mentioned, if that company were to go bankrupt, they would carry the risk as well as the benefit. If the company goes bankrupt, and this guy has to pay off all of his debts, the worker may lose his job, but he's not the one who's going to incur the debt of having gone bankrupt. If you incur risk, then you are the one who pays the downside. The worker does not pay the downside. Okay, it is the investor who pays the downside, who invested in all the machinery, who sunk millions of dollars into making your labor productive. Because guess what? Your labor is without that machinery. Gunk, nothing. You don't have a pencil to put together, you don't got the wood, you don't got the, you don't got the paint, you don't got the rubber, you don't got the metal, you got nothing. Right, you're sitting there, standing outside, twiddling your thumbs. It required somebody to invest, mil who do you think put more in? The guy who spent millions of dollars buying all the machinery, leasing the place, making sure there was a management structure, doing the LLC formation, making sure all the tax code was in compliance, or you standing outside because you can stick a piece of graphite into a piece of wood. <laughs> now we're done. This dude's a douchebag. Bonafide, certified douchebag. You know what a douchebag is? The literal definition is something I'm not about to talk about on here. You can go Google that if you want to. But I'm just talking about in the figurative sense. Like, he's the same age as me. His name's Ben Shapiro, the dude that was talking at the end. And I've been to college with dudes like that. He's a whole-ass, bitch-ass dude. And he's not somebody I would ever talk to and have a conversation with. He's not somebody I'd ever hang out with. But you know what? This motherfucker's right right here. And this is what I'll be telling y'all about. You don't have to like somebody or even agree with them on anything for them to be right. There's a difference between an employer and an employee. There's a difference between socialism and capitalism. And it's massive. And we're going to talk about that here in this video. Before I do that, hit like, hit share. Hit comment and make sure you click those links in the bio. One of the links is too, buddy. The only social media tool that I use is free to install. This made me over $42,000 on YouTube. Go click, download, install TubeBuddy right now. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pod. My name is Dorian from GroupAddy2Music.com and right here we got douchebag versus douchebag in waiting talking about first world problems, which is who deserves more? The people that work at the company or the people that own the company? Now, as someone who was once an employee who has had over 31 jobs, which I'm probably gonna do a video about all the jobs I've had up to this point, and who now owns a business and has people that work for me, 
I don't know if there's too many people in the realm of social media that's able to talk about this objectively. I'm black, I'm middle class, primarily liberal, Democrat based on how I was raised, fiscally conservative, might be considered Republican when it comes to money, don't really give a shit about who's fucking or what they do with their bodies, want black people to stop getting killed by the police, and I wanna be a billionaire. So for me, this shit, it is what it is. When I put up my money, I take on all the risk. Group 82 has done a fantastic job over the past three years. Group 82 has benefited Cassie, has benefited Dom, has benefited Alex, has benefited other people that have worked for us. It's benefited a lot of people who have been here. But at the end of the day, who is Group 82? Who has Group 82 inside of all of their social media handles? Me. When y'all think Group 82, y'all think Dorian. Why? This is my money. This is my time. This is my dreams. This is my blood, my sweat, my tears. Me being up to three, four, five, six o'clock in the morning. Me getting ripped off by people. Me getting scammed by people. Me getting wins. Me finding great investments and putting it back into the business as opposed to going to trick it off in some goddamn strip club. I've had to be disciplined with this shit. I've had to grow as an entrepreneur. My dad didn't own a business. My dad was a worker. He worked for the government. He still does, the FAA, and I'm not knocking him. That's his personality. But that wasn't for me. So if anything happens with Group 82, it falls on me. Group 82 is a member of my family. I love Group 82. It protects me and my family. If something happens to Group 82, Cassie, Dom, Alex, anybody else I want to name, yeah, they're out of a job. Damn, they might like working here. They gonna find something else. Within two weeks, they ain't gonna be thinking about it. If Group 82 goes under, it's gonna be like I lost a fucking family member. It's gonna be like a death in the family for me. I'll be crushed, because that's what entrepreneurship is. So if I develop this system that generates Group 82 a lot of money and we're able to start paying people, why in the fuck do you think you deserve equity? You don't deserve equity in this. This came from here and here and here for years. You came on when we could afford to pay you or at least teach you some skills that could get you paid. Employees are not employers. It's a vast difference. Now, I know a lot of y'all are thinking right now, you know, capitalism is the death of the country and greed is why we got all these isms. And, you know, you say you're tired of black people getting killed in the streets, but you know, if it wasn't for capitalism, that wouldn't happen. Listen, people are inherently selfish. It doesn't matter if it involves money or not. People are inherently selfish. And they're going to find ways to divide. And here in America, we are a capitalistic country. And these are the rules of capitalism. And either you can choose to abide by them and benefit yourself and protect your family and enrich yourself, or you can try to fight to system and it's just going to fall on deaf ears. America has become arguably the leading economic power in the world and has been for centuries now because of capitalism. We have been number one and or number two, however you want to rank us. Why the fuck are we changing now? To make you feel good? Because you feel like because you are a barista at Starbucks that you should own as much of it as the Schultz family? Does it make any sense? On top of all of this, this is why we have the stock market. Because if you work somewhere, like you're a cashier at Walmart, you can take your $200 you get every week from Walmart. You can go buy stock in Walmart. So now technically you are an owner. Well, it's not the same. No, it's not the motherfucking same because you're not Sam Walt. You didn't come up with that idea. He did. So that's why his kids and grandkids and great grandkids are old money billionaires. And that's why they live a life in Bentonville, Arkansas that some of y'all will never see and some of us can never imagine. He took that risk. And for every Sam Walton, there's a thousand other entrepreneurs that failed. He made it. He deserves a success. Jeff Bezos made it. He deserves a success. Bill Gates, Donald Trump, Mark Zuckerberg, Jay-Z. They deserve the success. And y'all sitting here complaining when you could do the exact same shit. See, that's a great thing about being in a free market system. That's a great thing about being in capitalism. Everything I'm doing here at Group 82, I'm trying to mimic what those other great entrepreneurs did themselves. And I'm doing a pretty good job of it so far. And if you're jealous of me and what I'm doing, because I get to sit around and yell at a camera and make at least $1,000 each time that I do this, then why don't you turn on the fucking camera and yell at yourself? You can start an Instagram page and post every goddamn day. You can post every day on YouTube. You can post every day on TikTok. You can post every day on Twitter, on Facebook. You can go launch an e-commerce store right now. Technology is so far along right now, you don't even have to have an original product. You can sell other people's products. At the beginning of this video, I talked about TubeBuddy. I don't own TubeBuddy. I put the TubeBuddy link in the description box 
on YouTube and in the link in the bio on Instagram. And when y'all click it, I get credit. When y'all pay for it, I get paid in perpetuity. I don't own nothing with TubeBuddy. It's never been easier to make money. And with NFTs and crypto, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Dogecoin, or fuck it's called. I had to sell it because Robin Hood's a piece of shit, then it goes up. Fuck Dogecoin. All these things that we're living in right now, if you want to complain like this little spoiled ass bitch in the crowd, you don't deserve to be successful. Stop fucking crying and worrying about what other people got. Look at how they did it and mimic it so you can have your own too. This shit is not that hard. You just got to put in the work. And most of y'all don't want to. You want a motherfucker to hand you shit. Ain't nobody going to hand you a goddamn thing. For those of us that get on our own, we eat first. For those y'all that want to sit around and wait, you got to wait to get fed. It's up to you. So Ben Shapiro, you a bitch. You were right right here. Dude in the crowd, you just a spoiled ass college kid who don't know shit. Those y'all that want to hate in the comments about capitalism and all this shit. Do you really enjoy your life? You really like where you live? Do you like what you drive? Do you like what you eating every day? Are you truly genuinely happy? Then your ass should stop bitching about how other people are getting money and start looking at how they getting money and enrich yourself so you can live the life that you want to live. I know that's what the fuck I'm doing. You ain't never seen me bitch about nobody getting no money ever. Anytime I talk about somebody getting money, I do it because it's inspiration. Even if it's somebody like Donald Trump, somebody who I fundamentally disagree with on 90% of the things he talks about. I ain't knocking that man for being a billionaire. He's a fucking billionaire. Those y'all want to argue with his daddy gave him a loan and all that. $10 million ain't a billion. It's not. Well, it ain't that hard to flip it. Well, if it ain't that hard to flip it, motherfucker, why don't you go take that dime that you're going to find on the sidewalk today when you walk out to your car, and why don't you turn that into $100? Why don't you turn that into $1,000? It's so fucking easy. That's right. You don't know how to do it because you spend all your time bitching instead of educating yourself on the game. Study the game and learn how to make your money work for you and stop complaining about what everybody else is doing. If you somebody wants your money to work for you or you need help with that, you on Instagram, click that link up top. You on YouTube, click the link in the box. Mouth the pond. Y'all stay true. About that. Group82music.com.